What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my guys, Eric Sheetshaber and Kenny Heider. We are back to talk another week of PGA golf after, for me, an incredibly disappointing Masters. I didn't, it wasn't even disappointing. I just didn't do well. Um, it was not, it was not my best, ma my, my best uh, tournament. Um, at the same time, it was like one of those wild things because everybody was all over the place. You had guys winning tournaments with three guys who were seven over. <laughs> it was like wild. Um, anyway, we're on, to, we're on to another week. Uh, before we get into it, Sheets, why don't you say your thoughts on sort of the overall, maybe the, the, the tournament, and uh, then we'll jump over to Kenny and just get some general thoughts before we go tier by tier. Yeah, I don't know if, if the, the industry in their content talks about this, but I'm, I'm sure they did throughout the course of the week. Um, I'm just kind of predicting. And you might hear maybe the term master's hangover, um, which, which is used to describe you know, what happens when, when a golfer plays in like a really, really big event that they get up for and, and whether, you know, if they have a particularly stressful, you know, Sunday um, to maybe have a letdown the following week. Um, and that actually does play into a lot of my thoughts on, on sports in general. And, and it's funny because I'm usually just a straight, you know, straight numbers guy, but when it comes to that type of stuff, I'm very, very uh, cognizant of it. Um, so that is something to, to, to think about. Now you don't have, uh, you don't have Scheffler in, but you have, uh, you have other guys and that's something, that's something again, to, to think about. Um, uh, and again, like anything else depends how the ownership kind of plays out. Um, you know, Bobby and I've spoken about this a lot over the last couple of years where a guy wins the week before and Bobby's like, well, just because he won the week before, doesn't mean he's forced to lose the next week. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> maybe he's got something if he's winning, you know what I mean? Maybe he's not so bad. And you shouldn't just not play him just because he won, right? Um, and, and there's certainly something to be said to that also. Um, the other overall comment about this uh, this tournament is that from what I've read, it, you don't need to typically to be like a really long hitter uh, to win this one. So that might affect uh, who people might be playing and things like that. But overall, in general, I, I would prefer, I mean, all else being equal, someone that either – well, I would say didn't play the masters. Most everybody played the masters, but either someone who didn't play the masters or, or did not, you know, overexert themselves in the masters, but that, that's only to break ties. I wouldn't toss somebody just because they happen to have played a good master. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, well, wow, that's really frustrating. Um, okay. Um, something else I just saw. No, uh, she, uh, Kenny, why don't you tell us about your, your thoughts on this and then we'll uh, jump into tier by tier. She's why don't you share your screen? If you don't mind. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I it's tough. Okay. Oh, okay. You don't, you don't want to do it? During the day is always hard. Okay. We just have always done it this way, but I can change, change it. I have to get a screen up. And... No, I, I got it. I got it. Hold on one second. All right, Kenny, go ahead. No, so I, 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 uh, I actually, I have kind of similar thoughts to Sheets um, coming out of the Masters. I don't think, um, you know, not everyone's got the best uh, <laughs> excitement for this tournament, um, especially like you're saying, some of the guys who maybe had a little bit of a letdown over the weekend, things like that. Um, also this, you know, this week we're going back to South Carolina. Um, there's nine golfers in the field from South Carolina. Historically, uh, some of the big names that are from South Carolina have always done well here. And, uh, I'm going to definitely be targeting, um, some of that for that reason. And, you know, not all of it, but also some of the guys, there's a couple of guys who I think have, um, you know, some decent chances in the lower ranges, and that's going to kind of be my focus also this week, <clears throat> especially after last week, uh, just, you know, flashback to the masters, you know, my, my biggest target last week was Scotty Shuffler and Cam Smith together. And I had them all over the place and I still lost money. So it was, it was really frustrating. It makes me, it's kind of making me think about um, how I was approaching that build and, and maybe trying to do something a little bit different this week. Hey, let me, let me follow up with you on what you just said, um, Kenny, about the South Carolina thing. Um, is it people that are from South Carolina? They're, they're, it's good that they're home, or is it from people that live there that they get to practice on the course, or or some combination of those two? Things? Both, yeah, it's both. So, like Webb Simpson, uh, historically is you know done really well here. He's always a big name in this field because he knows the course really well. It's his home course. He's from there. He lives there. Um, same with a couple other guys like Kisner. Um, you know, DJ is from South Carolina. Has you know obviously has a good chance any week, but also, you know, being back home, I think gives a little bit of an advantage and also just that course history when, you know, you've played it multiple times, not on tour, uh, 
just gives you a little bit more of knowing where to hit the tee shots and where to approach. And, and similar to, um, you know, Augusta, there's that same kind of um, unusual aspect on this course where there's a lot of right to left uh, tee shots, which isn't as common. And, you know, um, I remember, I, I can't remember what hole it, I think it's the eighth hole on this course. It's like this big dog leg left. And I remember watching Webb last year, I think on Friday or something, just hit like the craziest line way over the trees, looked like it was out of bounds and then just landed right on the fairway in front of the green because he just knew exactly where he's hitting. That kind of knowledge of, oh, well, if I hit it over this tree line blind, you know, I think is, is important here on this course. Yeah, interesting. Um, all right, well, let's jump into the, to the tiers. Um, you know, last week, the one thing we did, it, well, Kenny and I got right was the, the, the need to spend, well, at least, that, you know, we talked about it a little bit, the, the need to spend up for two guys at the top and you really couldn't have won unless you did last week. Um, this is not going to be the same exact type of situation, but I do think it's something you know to talk about because I like I like these guys at the top, but I don't have a huge differentiator. I think I, like Morikawa may have been my favorite, but his ownership is probably going to keep me a little lower. I do love JT as well, and I like DJ and Cam Smith. I'm okay with skipping um, Cantlay personally. I know you guys always like to play Cantlay. I just haven't seen the same guy, um, but I. I, I'm having trouble deciphering which ones I prefer between those four. So maybe you can help me out with that. So Sheets, why don't you start us off with your favorites in the 10 Yeah, before, could you just confirm that I'm sharing the DraftKings uh, yeah. screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and as you uh, as you correctly predicted, I, I do like Cantlay the best um, at, uh, at at 10K of the guys over uh, over 10K. And and second guy I have there is, is JT. And I do like both of them quite a bit, actually. Um, uh, I'm not going to be able to play them both, um, nor, nor particularly do I want to. Um, but I do, I do like both of those. And, and not to say I'm definitely going to have one of those in all my lineups because there are other, you know, there's other ways to go. I do like both of those. And the way my stuff works, it's not often that, that you get like the, you know, the 10K and 11K guys like the top rated guy for me. Unless it's like John Rahm, who rates like number one every week and then loses, you know what I mean? But uh, but but can't lay. I have as my top, and then Thomas. I don't really have much interest, at least numbers wise, in in Morikawa or DJ or or Cam Smith. Um, and that's that's my take of this range. All right, let's. Uh, sounds good, um, Kenny. How, how about you? So in, in the top range. Um, I like DJ the most this week. Um, playing into the narrative of you know a Masters hangover, he you know played well. He wasn't in contention. Um, you know, wasn't a super stressful weekend for him as opposed to like Cam Smith, who <laughs> was in contention on Sunday and then blew it up. Um, and you know, I, I I do like Cam Smith again this week, especially considering um, you know I guess ownership's not solidified yet, but he seems to be looking like he's going to be on the lower owner side ownership side along with dj um so they're those two are pretty much going to be my only focus in the 10k range wait wait i'm sorry can you repeat that you said dj and who and who and and cam smith again and, smith. and i just I, I i don't like cam smith this week as much as i typically do and i typically like him 100 percent, just because of what a terrible sunday he had at the masters and I think, um, you know, that's got to be frustrating. It's got to be a little bit disappointing to, you know, blow up the lead or blow up a, a shot at the lead. At, at least he was, you know, one back at one point. Um, and so I don't think, you know, he's just going to have the, he's not going to be yet as in it this week. I don't think as he is typically, but um, you know, he's still a phenomenal golfer. So I'm still going to have exposure to him, especially if he ends up being on the lower ownership side. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. All right, um, so let's jump down to the 9K range. Who, who, do you like? who do you like? That's what I said. I named all the guys I like to start, and I said I don't oh, right. like okay. differentiate from them. I still think that I'm higher on JT and DJ probably, um, okay. but I do like Morikawa. It's just the – right it. now I have him as the most popular, so I'm having a little trouble there. Okay. Um, all right, let's jump down to the uh, under 10K range. Uh, Kenny, why don't you start us off with this range? This round range um so this is a really this i feel like this is the most difficult range the 9 to 10k range in the 9ks um because the ownership looks like it's super chalky all over as it should be all of these golfers have been you know playing great um have good course history here so it's really 
for me is going to kind of sort out to, I think, ownership plays and maybe not focusing as heavy on this range as maybe, some, you know, the ones below it. But in the in the range, I think, um, you know, my my biggest exposure is going to be probably Fitzpatrick. Um, and he looks to be like he's going to be, be probably the the most owned. Um, but that's fine. I'll just try to go over the field on that. And then I actually think I'm going to go a little off and just purely on ownership, uh, try to get in some exposure to Spieth here. Um, you know, he missed the cut at the Masters. Uh, that's got to be frustrating, but he's going to have to want to do something this week just to get something going for the, at the start of the season here. Yeah, yeah, definitely seems like an interesting ownership play. Sheets, how about you? Yeah, so you have the three model darlings um, that are showing up as great plays and, and highly owned. And, and these are the same three as usual. You have Berger, Fitzpatrick, and Russell Henley, right? And all three of them, just all their all their metrics and all their analytics dictate they're always a good play every week, and people always play them. Um, and, you know, when you play those guys, as, as Kenny was saying, just, you know, just just be at least be cognizant of the ownership. Like, if you want to play Fitzpatrick, you, you can, but I think I think the way you're handling it is 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 is, is good, Kenny. I mean, if you if you like them, just you know, screw it. I'll just take fifty percent of it. You know what I mean, like, right. hey, it's not a big deal. Um, I can't quite differentiate between Fitz. I can't make Fitzpatrick a better play than Berger. I can't make him a better play than Henry. That's the only thing. Um, the next the next one is 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 Lowry. I seem to have missed the boat on Lowry. You know what I mean? Like, I just never quite. Every time I get to where I might want to play him, he just always looks a little too expensive. And I don't play him, and he always kind of smashes in my face when I don't play him. Um, maybe I'm just missing it. Maybe, maybe he's like really just this good now, and he just should be this price like all the time. Yeah, I missed out every every time Cam Smith smashes. I just yeah, I never understood why you never like Cam Smith. I don't remember you ever. Yeah, liked. yeah, it's weird. Um, but Shane Lowry is, is like is this other guy. No, he's 15% owned. I mean, he's he's going to be owned also. So um, I don't think you can overload with this range of a bunch of 15 to 20% guys. Um, so I think you probably have to differentiate elsewhere if you do that. But uh, I agree with uh, with with um, with Kenny about Fitzpatrick. I think Fitzpatrick and Berger are about even, and then uh, and then Henley um, and then Lowry on my list. Uh, I will say, by the way, I, there are a couple of uh, I did three outright bets this week, and one of them, the one I just almost did it but didn't because I didn't want to do four. Was the next one I was going to do was was Neiman. I could have gotten thirty five to one on Neiman. I didn't do it. So if there's a fourth, and I'm going to get to my other three, but my fourth outright bet, it would have been Neiman. Yeah, I I, I understand that one. Um, I, I have Neiman, Berger, Henley as my priorities with Fitzpatrick as a possibility. Um, I think that I would go, I probably would go Neiman, then Henley, then Berger, whatever, all things being considered. That's, the, and then, well, I like Fitz just as much or better, but I do think he's going to end up with like a decent amount more, even than he's being projected for more than them, except for Henley. Um, but I really like Henley. So Henley, Fitzpatrick, Neiman, and uh, Berger for me. Again, it, it could change with ownership. If, if we start thinking that Sungjae will be unowned again, I'll always take a shot on Sungjae. Um, I have him about you know, between 10 and 15%. I mean, he'll, he'll be in there. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. All right. How about down in the 8K range? Can you say, you don't like the, the 9K range too much, you're going to have similar, like everybody should be around or close enough to double digits with the exception of maybe one or one or two guys here. But what do you think about this range and who are you looking at? So I like this range. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go Go for it. Oh, I I like this range a lot. Um, You'd already mentioned Webb Simpson. He's a local guy here. Uh, He's in the past five years, never placed out out of the top 20 with his worst being a 16th. And he won it two years ago, uh, including two top, two other top tens. Um, I think, you know, everyone's going to be on him, but, uh, you know, it's not looking like he's projected that high. So, um, if everyone's missing out on that, that's fine. I'll, I'm going to be loaded on web. Uh, also in the range here, I, I really like this week, uh, Harold Barnell, the third, uh, again, <clears throat> and I actually, he was one of my plays last week. Um, and he was in this, I think it's 7,800 or something like that. Significantly less. No, he was like 6,700, I think. 6,800, I think. Yeah, he was, yes, super cheap. And then, you know, he goes on to, you know, not only make the weekend, but place, you know, at least in the middle of the field at the Masters. Um, I'm going to be all over him again. Um, and then again, um, I like the Siwoo play. Uh, I, 
I, you know, it's another, he's a Pete, Pete Dye core specialist, um, you know, length isn't as big a concern, which is one of his bigger weaknesses. Um, he's been playing great. Uh, and, you know, just the nature of um, like what Sheets was saying with it being a master's hangover week. I do think that that plays in a little bit and makes the field a little bit less weak than it actually is. Um, you know, I don't think every guy in the 10K makes the cut this week. They're not, you know, it's going to be a kind of bang or bust situation for some of the more expensive guys. Um, so I, I like some of the, you know, cheaper plays here where I think that they have a good chance at, you know, top 10 um, because the top of the field isn't going to be as concerned about, you know, it's going to be win or lose, right? And then lastly, um, Kisner, uh, who's another local guy um, <clears throat> who's been playing pretty well lately. I, I just, you know, the odd thing is I was thinking I was going to stack Kisner pretty heavy uh, when I was doing some research yesterday. And then last night I had a dream that he withdrew, which is <laughs> the weirdest thing. So it kind of scared me, but um, I don't know. Take that, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Yeah. I, I hear you. I, I'm big on the dream thing too. So I will go with my normal Tommy Fleetwood um, who even as he struggles his way to 20th again or whatever he does. Um, I, I, I just love, I mean, what, he, what did he finish? I think he finished 19th or 18th or I don't remember what he was. 14th. 14th. Yeah. yeah so you got his last, his last four tournaments have been 14, 16, 13 and 20 and a 14th and a 13th and the two biggest in the, in the players and the uh, masters. Um, I, I, I really like him. Uh, I'm a nervous because I like Alex Norton, but I don't think I'm going to end up getting to him because I like a couple other guys. I, I like the Siwoo call. Um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm going to take shots on Hatton if, and Horschel if nobody play him. Um, but my, my two actual favorites would be Fleetwood and Webb in this range. And then those other guys I'm mixing in. So I have a couple of thoughts. I think you're going you're to like these, but maybe. Well, first of all, one you might not like is um, – so regarding Harold Warner, I mean, remember, he was like a big part of my big cash a few weeks ago. And I played him last week also. And after, I think, one of the rounds this past week, he was really, really doing well. And and I almost tweeted, but I didn't because I was afraid I was getting canceled. I was going to say, looks like everybody picked the wrong 5% on black guy. And, and, <laughs> and so I decided not to. So I figured I'd wait till this time. I'll wait till when not as many people are following me if I can get canceled now. So meanwhile, even though I thought I'd rather of, you do it the other way next time so that we're not on, on the spot for it. Too. Exactly. And that's why I say you might start off hating me. You'll end up liking me at the end. Um, so, but you know, the, the, the cancel gods punish me and Barner faded anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, but with regard to the, for, for this week, first of all, I do like Hatton. Um, the other thing is one of my outright bets, you're going to be my best friend because it is Fleetwood. I'm, I'm totally betting Fleetwood outright. I'm getting a 55 to one. Ooh, let's go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, sounds good to me. Um, uh, he's, you know, you know what? I always, the issues I always have with Fleetwood always seemed as though he wasn't committed to playing these tournaments in the United States. You know what I mean? He'd be out in the, uh, in, in the Euro tour, whatever it is. Every once in a while he'd show up here, but I'm seeing him every week now. You know what I mean? I'm getting, I'm getting into this idea, you know, and, and he's playing well, he's doing well. And, and you know, while it's not an easy field, you know, whatever. I, I I think it's I think it might be time. So I do like him a lot, both in DFS and outright. But my my favorite guy that we haven't mentioned, I like him a lot. He's a guy I've, I've played before, and he's he's good with numbers. He's gonna be probably sort of low owned. I think I think uh, bigger buys people play him, and he satisfies the Masters hangover things. I don't think he played the Masters. I'm going back to my friend Chris Kirk at AK. Um, I'm, he's one of my favorite plays in that range. Uh, people do tend to play him. That's the only thing. Um, but I definitely like him quite a bit. So for me, it's Hatton, Kirk, uh, and Fleetwood is my two, my three favorites. Hatton, Kirk, and Fleetwood. Cool. Well, so we're all a little different. I actually like the Kirk idea too. I just didn't want to overwhelm the. Oh no, we're 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 cashed on Fleetwood this this week, Mr. Bobby. I love it. I'm excited about it, man. All right, let's do 7,500 and 79 because I guess it just can't, it eats up my, too much of my screen. I don't have it organized like that. So let's just do 7,500 to 7,900, then we'll do the, the 7K to 7,700. Um, why don't you start this one off, Sheets? Okay. So from that particular range, I like uh, two guys. Um, both are sort of off brand, not really, um, but, but I, will, I will go back to Tomito. I will continue my string of never getting him right. 
Um, so I do like him at 7,700. I have him listed at less than 10% ownership, which- uh, Yep, that's exciting. Just sounds good to me. Uh, and the other guy, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of uh, relinquishing the bad attitude take on, on, on Kevin Streelman. I will go, I will continue, I'll start playing him again. Uh, he's, you know, he's, in the, he's on the bad attitude train for about you know, six weeks there. And he's out of, he's out of the penalty box, let's put it that way. And because he's less than 10%, that helps him get out of the penalty box. So 7,500, Kevin Streelman, I like that. Um, so I think those are the only two I actually like uh, worth mentioning in, th in that range, actually. Yep. Um, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll go with mine and I'll go to Kenny's at the end. Um, I love Mito I, a ton this week, and I'm sort of surprised that no one else is on him. So I will be high on Mito. Um, debating because it's a good course for like Kucher and Kevin Na. I think I'm probably going to pass on Na, but I might play some Kucher. And I think he's going to have some ownership. So that's a little unfortunate. Yeah. I think Kokrak is getting overlooked too. So I'm sort of just tempted to use this as my little bit, you know, use the single digit own guys um, with Mito, Kokrak. Um, and then the one chalky one that I'm into or is, is Hadwin, I guess. Why two. is this? So, so, so he looks good. I mean, I don't have him rated that great. I see him at 18% ownership. And uh, oh, someone smart once told me never to play these 7,500 guys as chalk. I don't know. I mean, the problem is when you have it this spread out, it's hard to really call anybody chalk when you have got everybody around 20% so far that we've talked to, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just a matter of, um, it, I it's, honestly, the, the, re the reason he's, he's about to say a 7,500 guy, the thing is he should be in, he should be around 9k for this tournament basically. Okay. All right. Um, and that's what everybody else is saying. It's, it's really, a uh, what, I mean, he hasn't he top 10 his last three tournaments, I guess. <laughs> So it's kind of strange to see the price. So I, I totally get it. So I, I'm actually going to gonna probably eat a little bit of that chalk then. Uh, guys in great form. I mean, again, at 8,600, I think we, I would have been talking about him. So at 7,600, it's hard for me to ignore him. I do like Hoagie as well, though, at the same price, uh, even though I think he's going to have some ownership as well. But I would go Mito one for me in this range. Uh, two probably had win. Three Kokrak, four Hoagie. Kenny? Hmm. So uh, interesting that you both like Mito. He wasn't, I, I'm going to have to re-examine that. Um, Hadwin looks great, uh, obviously, but, you know, the ownership is really hard, especially in this range for it to be that projected high. It's, you know, that actually is kind of what hurt me last week was, uh, you know, primarily Gary Woodland, uh, who was a big target oh. for me, who was cheap oh. and... Feared everybody, everybody though. Crush me. Yeah, oh. I know. <laughs> what we get for paying guys uh, um, twenty five percent owned at, at sixteen hundred. Right. right. So I think I learned a lesson there. Um, I also do like Kucher. Um, he's another one of the guys that's got just phenomenal course history here. Um, he's played well the last couple of times. Like actually played really great the last couple of times he's been out. Um, you know, one of those guys too who uh isn't gonna have to worry about distance off the tee um you know on a shorter course um pete die course design you know he's got good history at that sort of thing <clears throat> and i don't mind that his ownership there i mean it's it's almost what less than half of, of, of hadwins so um that's fine with me uh also i like um a little bit of an interesting play here for me is going to be ian poulter uh, who just looks like he's going to have no ownership, uh, didn't play the Masters last week. I'm sure he was watching and practicing in his mansion. Um, but also, you know, past five years, uh, you know, three top tens and no missed cuts. So, um, I, you know, I really like the guys who have a no, no missed cut history uh, on this course, especially coming right after the Masters like it does. Um, and, and especially with these guys who didn't play last week because they're, they're motivated. They, they want to get out there and have their name on TV again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then also, um, again, this week, I'll be back to Hoagie. Um, I just believe that he's doing great. I, it makes sense that he's a little, you know, his price is rising. Um, that's fine with me. And, you know, as long as he's not 25% owned, I'll be probably playing Hoagie every, every week. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Um, one name we didn't mention that I think because of the ownership and the fact that we didn't mention him, I'm going to take shots on, and it's not an ideal course for him, you wouldn't think, but the Cam Young at 3% after being like, what was he, 12% at the Masters, yeah. feels a little funny. Um, so I, I, in the interest of continually trying to get the young guys right, I'm going to probably have to make Cam Young 
uh, put Cam Young into some lineups because I don't feel as adamantly like about everybody in that range. I feel like good about them except for Mito. Um, I, I'm very okay with just playing some Cam Young at low ownership instead of some of those other guys. All right, Kenny, why don't you start this one off between seven and 7,400? Okay, so this one, um, this is a little bit of an interesting range. I don't have a ton of interest here outside of like Stuart Sink, who won it last Ooh. year, which was a big surprise. But I think, you know, why not uh, play well again? He doesn't have to win it at 7,200 and, you know, less than 5% ownership. Um, and then also, where were we? Uh, oh, um, also JJ Spawn, who I great faded, man. faded faded last week, uh, but incorrectly so. Um, you know, he the narrative obviously going to the Masters, having win, you know, qualified the week before. Um, but he was one of what was it four or five golfers that won the last tournament they played before the start of the Masters last week or something like that. Yeah. But I think you know he he placed twenty third at the Masters uh when he qualified the week before why this guy's rolling you know let's get back onto him i think that you know he has a great shot especially considering how i feel that the slate is going to end up you know being a little less uh competitive than than it would be with you know the names that we see at the top just because of the the whole master hangover narrative so back to jj spawn for me um this week i think i like it um i guess i'll go real quick um I, I, what I said about Cam Young, I, I still want to have some Luke List interest. I like the JJ Spawn idea. I think Munoz you could include as a as a guy who you know it's maybe a little too cheap in this tournament. I like um, uh, Straka, Thagala, and my man. I can't not play the general, so a little bit of the general for me. And and those are my guys basically that I'm using in this range. The one thing that's crazy about this range is that you really have like no ownership on this entire, range, this lower tier range, the 7K to 7,400, like nobody should be double digit owned. And so they're all interesting plays. So I might want to expand this a little bit and maybe tighten up my earlier, uh, my, my higher, my high, my spend ups a little bit, because I, I do think spreading out and getting some guys here who could make a run, like, and again, it's betting on some of the young guys, like the, like the Thigalas or the lists and JJ Spawn who's on a good run. Sebastian Munoz, who if he's hot can actually, he just, it's just, just because it's not a course fit. If it's a guy who, because he, he's, you know, better in courses that are longer and driving better for driving. It doesn't mean they can't play on shorter courses. Um, sure. yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to take some of those guys. And then, you know, with that, the one thing I want to mention is that like every single week, it's felt like for a long time now that he's played a tournament at least at some point, Scott Stallings felt like he was in contention. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw him out there as like a here's a guy nobody's playing and maybe he's turned a little bit of a corner. So, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of guys to sort of, you know, spread out in this range. But I like those four or five the most. Uh, how about you, Sheets? So I'm really confident now because I literally only had one one golfer this range. Well, but that's that's what I'm saying is that you don't you want to force them in because of, if we're talking about the ownership thing, because they're all everybody else double digits. Shouldn't you want to force more in here? I only like one guy in this range. OK. And the beautiful thing about it is neither of you mentioned him at all. So, so it's the same guy I play every week. I think he needs a nickname. I think that's the problem is that the general, I think, heard that he had a nickname. So he, this guy is now going to be officially Thurston Howell III, okay? Because Charles Howell III hasn't seemed to smash for me yet. So if we call him Thurston Howell III, maybe we got a shot. So, so he is the one guy I like in this range. Uh, he's at 7,100. I have him at 6.95% ownership and I will continue to, to blast on him. That will be my contribution to the, to the discussion on this range. Let's see how he's done. Hey, we've got a T4 so, in his last tournament, right? I actually really, really like the Charles. It's really interesting. Cause I, he, I liked him too, but I was, when I was looking at him yesterday, uh, I was actually using Saberson and they have him at 13% projected ownership, which just blew my mind and made me want to, run away yeah i don't but, know i did a, i did a i did a rerun this morning this is what i got so i don't okay I don't. well th that makes me like him a lot more than absolutely yeah I, i'm into uh, this um uh, i like the charles howell the third uh, you sold me sheets i have another 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 friend who, who likes charles howell the third by the way okay as well so that that's enough for me um also i'm surprised you didn't oh. mention the gala bobby i said the gala you did he oh did. you did one of my oh, top oh, guys oh, yeah oh. 
Oh, and then God. the other, I mean, look again, spreading out because I'm going to try to overwhelm this range in, and then tight, uh, spread out this range and then over, uh, tighten up my, my higher buy-in, my higher, uh, dollar players. But again, I'm just mentioning this cheap guys who like are going to make a lot of runs this year that no one's paying attention to. That's Davis Riley. And isn't it weird that Tringale is only seven K. Oh, I, uh, forgot my actually biggest play in this range is going to be Lucas Glover. There you go. Uh, who is also a South Carolina guy. Um, great history here. Played well recently. Um, not the best, um, you know, recent stats on like around the green putting, but um, I think I think he has a good shot at, you know, for 7,200, I think he has a great shot at, you know, maybe top 15 or, or, or better, um, especially just being, uh, you know, with the local narrative that I like this week. Nice. All right. I like, I like all these plays. That's the thing. That's what, what I'm saying is that I'm, I'm very, I get partly it's, it, I get so biased because I start seeing the ownership on some of these guys and it just makes me desperately like want to want to get them into some stuff <laughs> and it's all spread out in, in this lower range. So all those like guys I like at the top, even if I play a 25% owned Fitzpatrick, I don't mind doing it if I'm playing two guys who are five sub 5% in uh, this range. So I like, I like all these calls. Um, all right. The whole 6k range, Kenny, what do you got? So 6K range, uh, this is, there's, um, Count on you know, you. Count there's, on you. there's, there's four golfers from North, uh, South Carolina and one from North Carolina, uh, in the field this week in this range. Uh, I'm going to be kind of really focused on that. The one, uh, from North Carolina, uh, is one I'm hoping that Bobby likes this week. Cause, uh, he and I tend to line up on him, which is doc Redman. Um, I think has a interesting shot this week. Also, so I'll just tell you the guys in the field that are from South Carolina this week that are in the 6K range are Matthew Neesmith, who I don't actually mind, Bill Haas, uh, Wesley Bryan, who actually I really like, uh, and then Ben Martin, who I really don't like. But um, so for me, it's going to be um, Redmond, Wesley Bryan, and then um, also probably, um, who was it? Oh, Bo Hostler, I like this week. And then, uh, oops, who was it? Here we go. Nate Lashley will be my other one. I'll save you time. I don't like anybody in this range at all. I have one for the contest, but I'm, I'm not going to recommend anybody in this range this week. I think these are actually like, again, me and Cheats have a different approach on this one, which is interesting because we, we, we usually are similar-ish and this one, we're, yeah. we're different. I, I really think in terms of building construction, you should be trying to force in guys just because the ownership factor. I don't think that in, on, on you know, non-star studded fields that we shouldn't be expecting again, as usual, that two of these guys are going to compete. Um, I think Carlos Ortiz at 0.0% owned or whatever right. at 6,900 is interesting. Uh, I think Doug Gim is interesting. I love the Neesmith one. He's my number one guy in this range, and it's really not close. He's probably going to get a little bit of ownership. He'll be one of the few guys in this cheap tier that, that gets some ownership. But I do think he's interesting. Another guy who Kenny played a little bit of last week, Hudson Swafford, um, Luke Donald. None of these are priorities, but the one, the other priority one, the two that, I'm, that I have as priorities are Adam Svensson and, uh, excuse me, Adam Svensson and the first guy I mentioned, Neesmith. Uh, I do think we should give Harry Higgs a little bit of a nod, though, too. Just he's been playing well, and I always yeah, want an excuse to play those guy, this this guy. But those are the guys I've got. I don't mind if you want to throw in Sam Ryder, but I will be trying to get a, you know one of these six uh, K guys into a good portion of lineups. Spenson's becoming my new guy. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the same results as my other guys. He just keeps busting me, except for the one tournament he almost won for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's get to the game. All right, over ten K. Sheet, you started off. Who who I know who you're going to take. So I'm gonna have. To, that means I have to get some of them. Shoot. Okay. Go ahead, Sheet. Yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Cam. Okay. Kenny. I'm gonna take DJ. Okay, and I will take. Boy, I, I want to take more cow, but I'm take JT. Okay. Who is coming? Who is uh the top five? Kenny at nine K. Whatever. Under 10, under ten K. Any price. Uh, I'm gonna go with Fitzpatrick. Okay. Sheets. I'm going to go Daniel Berger. I like the, both of those. Now I have to think about it for a second. Um, I'll go Webb Simpson, even though he's a little bit cheaper. I can't believe we haven't mentioned Corey Connors name once, but just want to throw that out there, but I'm okay with it. I'm not screw sure. him. 
<laughs> I don't think any of us are fans. <laughs> well, no, me and Cheech used to play him all the time. Yeah. But then he gets crazy chalky popular, and then it's like, yeah. uh, maybe I don't like this guy so much. It's what happened with me with Kazire a little bit when yeah. he got really popular for a little bit. Um, all right, let's go to uh, the under 9K to make the top 10. Sheets, why don't you start off? All right, let's do it. Let's 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 gamble. Uh, Chris Kirk. Okay, Chris Kirk. And I also, by the way, I bet I have him at sixty-five to one. By the way. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, um, I'm Kirk Fleet. Just here, I'm Kirk Fleetwood and Varner. Right. Oh, well. Okay, I love it. All right. Well, we know who I'm going to take probably. So, Kenny, why don't you say who you're taking? Uh, I'll take uh, HV three. So now I have to play HV three too. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I actually like HV three as a, as a guy a lot. Uh, Fleetwood is my easy far and away pick here. And um, yeah, that's where I am. Uh, top, top 20 uh, under eight K. Kenny. Uh, this is the one I don't like the most, but I'm going to go ahead and just say Kucher. Kucher. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say Mito. Is he from, by the way, is Kucher from South Carolina? She's Georgia. No, no, he's, he's, yeah, Georgia, I think. I don't yeah. know where he's from. Um, and I'll take uh, uh, Charles Howell. Charles Howell, there we go, okay. And then under 6K, who Sheets doesn't like anybody, so I'll start with Ken. But I got someone for the contest, but go ahead. Okay, all right, all right, go with your, go with your guy then. Let's do I'll take, uh, I'll take Bad Hat, Joel Damon. Okay, Kenny? Uh, sorry, we're, we're under seven. At, under seven. Make the cut. Oh, right. I'm gonna go. Damn. I'm gonna say I'm gonna just go to Nee Smith. Nee Smith. I think that's a really good one. That's what I would have probably done. But I am also going to go i'm going to go back to my guy um svenson 9k or higher to miss the cut we've been pretty good about these lately by the way yeah <laughs> um ugh. 9k or higher to miss the cut. there are a couple of guys yeah they're they're not they're not exactly glaring like i ah. all right i'll go first i'll, I'll go, go first go. I'll, ta I'll take speed Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, Sheets, you're not going to like this, but I'm going to say Cantley. Ooh. I'm going to say, I like that play though. Um, I mean, I like that, like that call. Uh, I am going to say, you know what? I can't believe I'm going to, no, he's too consistent. I'll say Corey Connors, I guess. Whatever. Blah. Were you going to, were you going to say Sunjay? Yeah, but I like I like Sanjay actually. I I'd rather see Corey Connors miss the cut than Sanjay. <laughs> Maybe that's a personal one. Anyway, guys, um, should be another fun week. We'll be in Discord, yep. and uh, if you want to talk about showdowns and stuff like that during the during the tournaments, please pop, pop in your thoughts in Discord. Make yeah. sure you tag one of us, uh, Kenny Sheets, myself, or more more Sheets. My, I mean, more Kenny, myself, or. Uh, or anybody else who's playing DFS and we'll, we'll, we'll get into the conversation because it's a lot of fun talking. It It just wasn't as much fun this last week because nobody was doing well. <laughs> Somebody had to win it, right? Like, I swear, I felt like everybody I talked to got killed last week. Um, all right, guys, any final thoughts before we get out of here, Kenny? Oof, good luck. Fingers crossed. Yep. All right, Sheets. <laughs> Go Charles Howell. All right. Uh, I will say good luck to everybody. And thanks so much, Kenny. Thanks so much, Sheets. And uh, let's make some money this week, guys. Good luck.